Welcome back to Omni Garage. So tonight we've come to Wash and Shine and this is a coin operated car wash basically. And we've come here at night because this is when it's not as busy and so we can film and we're also not hogging up a bay and things like that. So um, it is freezing here. So we've taken one for the team and our whole idea of this tonight is to show you how you can sort of use a typical wash process. You can use some of the things that you have at home and you can come to a facility like this, use the pressure washer, use the soap and clean your car without sort of inducing any scratches and things like this. So this is for people who maybe live in a, an apartment building or live in an area where there's water restrictions and things like that and you can't drag out your pressure washer, you don't have access to running water and things like that, but you can come into town and you can come to a facility like this and, and basically wash your car. So we're going to show you how you do that. So step one, you've got to get yourself some cash or you've got to get yourself some tokens. So uh, Omni Garage is on the shelf for this one, so we're going to get, I don't know how much it costs, roughly about $10 I suppose to do your car, so you come over to your token machine, Put your card in, tokens will pop out, and that's what we're going to use to do the coin operation. What do we reckon we're going to spend tonight to do a wash? We'll, just start, with, we'll start with $10 and see how we go, eh? Okay, yeah, let's do it. So we're going to start with washing the car first. Typically, we would do wheels and then the car, but tonight we're going to start with the car. So just like always, we're going to use our rinse phase. So we're going to rinse the car down first using that high-pressure rinse. And there we go. Here we go. I like to kick on. Yeah, we've got the with, lights on. With water, yeah. Or with, with money. <laughs> so in a situation like this, you get roughly two minutes to use your water. So you can't be, you can't be slow about this. You know, if you're at home, you could take your time, but here, you've got to be quick. You've got to be mindful of that. Otherwise, you just keep chucking tokens into the machine and it keeps eating them, basically. So they do give you a couple of options here You can of, of soap. So you could use a triple color or you can use a brush with soap, high pressure soap, etc. These connections here are welded on. So you don't have a quick disconnect where you can unclip it and put your own foaming can on. So you are sort of bound to the fact that you have to use the soap for these type of places. I don't know if any other um, car wash like this allows you to clip in and out but here they're welded on so we have to use the soap here and it will come out of like a foam lance a spray foam lance I don't know what brand of soap it is I don't know anything like that but um, just to be mindful that you're not going to be able to use your own soap especially if you come to this one so what do you reckon you want to use uh, high pressure soap or you want to use the triple color yeah the two choices triple color high pressure let's go triple color that takes a while to kick in Isn't it quite funny how this has got the uh, the cherry scent, which was really on, which is really on trend at the moment, isn't it? Even here at this place, you're getting the, the cherry scent. It is. Cherry is the uh, the go-to scent for any car shampoo at the moment. It's a very clingy foam that you get here, as opposed to what we'd be spraying. What we would get out of the foam cannon, cannon right? Yeah. yeah. Like if you just have a look at how it's sitting on the uh, sitting on the surface very little water content to it, right? Now I am foaming the car quicker than you typically would if you were at home, and that's just because I'm time precious, right? So in an ideal world, you would fill your bucket up of water that we're gonna use now with our soap in it, in the rinse phase, or you would come with the bucket with a gamma seal lid already filled up from home, because um, this is not ideal. And now this is the part that you can bring your own soap from home. So this is Koch Kimi GSF. Add it to your bucket, bring your own sponge, and just wash the car like you've seen us do multiple times before. And now we can just wash usually top down. What do you reckon? Would you come here usually, or what are you? What are you feeling? You know what I used are you to enjoying this? To, what I did you used to, to do? I used to come to a wash world, yeah. and um, I would make the uh, the ultimate sun which is using the brush over here. Oh uh, yeah, so those brushes that they supply do not use that. Never ever use that. Look at that, that was from the last guy, terrible. So those bristles there are going to absolutely destroy your paintwork. So when I used to come to Wash World and wash my car like this, this was the, the main way I'd do it. I didn't own a pressure washer. It was just the thing to do, come down to Wash World, blow probably about ten dollars back in the day when I was doing that yeah I would use that brush and yeah it um, it made a mess of the paint but I didn't know it 
you know? You didn't know it at the time, right? I and so right, I, I would, what I would do is I would was just foam, I would rinse it, foam the car, and then I would then get the rinse again and just rinse down. I wouldn't do any wash step. I thought the soap was doing the washing. Yeah, look, what I would have previously done is I would have done the high pressure rinse, what we did. <clears throat> I would have then done the foaming, but the foam from the corn operator car wash I used to go to came from the brush. So oh, basically, to get so the you foam on to, the car, you had to brush it. You had it. to use it, right. Then I would, at the same time, brush it in, thinking that I was cleaning the car, I probably was, but I was also scratching it. Then I'd go to, they had a, uh, and I'd just put all these scratches in my car, but I had to go for the, uh, the spot-free rinse. The spot-free uh, rinse. You can't have uh, water spots and scratches. Yeah, you know, right. You one. And then, so I would come here probably once a week, actually, because I used to live in the apartment. I didn't have access to anything, and so, I'd be coming here once a week, and actually then, if I wasn't coming once a week, in between, if the car wasn't too dirty, I would grab the detail spray, spray it on, and dry wipe it. So and I was probably putting heaps of scratches in that way too. So these are all the methods not to do it. So the way that we've done it here today, bringing your two buckets along, using what you can here, just staying away from that brush, that's the way to go for your safest wash. And you have to sort of be in mind that people are gonna watch you, people are gonna think you're weird, but, you just have to get on with it, right? So what's that soap like? How, it's I mean, you've got nulli. GSF in the bucket. I've got GSF bucket. in the bucket. It's, n it's not very slick. Well, I mean, it's been a solid five, six minutes since we foamed it, and I mean, look at that. I mean, it's not the worst soap you could ever use, but it's nowhere near like the comforts we have at home. But I mean, if this is all you had at home, then this is totally fine. You can get the job done with what we've shown you and, and, and the process that we've got here and with the tools that are available to you here. This is totally acceptable. So I guess one of the beauties of coming here, if you had a house that was in a real sunny spot, like your driveway was sunny, and you had to do that all the time at home, then coming here, that's all undercover here. So you could get away from being out of the sun, which means you'd get away from um, not getting those water spots on your vehicle. So this could be a viable option for you if you're in that type of situation. So by bringing your own mitt, you can also do a few things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do like being able to get in your door jams, maybe in and around your gas cap and things like that. So that's why you do sort of bring a few luxuries from home. So now we can just rinse off like we usually would. Okay, so just like you're at home, you spray your brake buster onto your wheels. You can't foam it here because we don't have the ability to attach a foam cannon. And we have our bucket of all of our usual wheel things. So got the barrel brush to clean our barrels. I suppose the only downside to here is that after you'd finished cleaning one wheel, you usually give it a rinse down. But um, here I've had to clean all four wheels and then I'll be able to put my two bucks in and then do the rinse. Um, I suppose there's no real way of getting around that. The only way is, is if you were prepared to put two bucks in every time you want to rinse a wheel, which would be absolutely pointless. I don't know about you, but would you bring your Viper chair here? Or is that taking it to the next level? Is that like, I don't, is I that like the level that you get bullied at? The Viper Low Pro would be nice. So putting your big Viper chair in the car with all the buckets and everything. But um, I mean, that crate's working out right for you, isn't it? This is this is the OG. This is what we used to have back in the day. We I didn't ever had a chair. All I had was a, you know, how much does a crate cost? Thirty bucks, forty bucks. <laughs> yeah. You get a crate of beer, drink the beer, use the crate, detailing chair. The only reason why I bought it for tonight is because when we pull over there to dry the car, I can stand on it to get onto the roof to uh, put B Maker on. That's the only reason. But um, I'm using it as the old detailing chair. No one has really cared so far, you know. That's no one's, no one's laughed at me. Well, there's actually no one here, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, so we've come out to do this. It's uh, about eight o'clock at night at the moment. So it's a, yeah. We did it so that we could choose a time where there wasn't too many people around because obviously we're doing this video so you can see what bits you want to take in, what bits you want to um, not necessarily do at peak times and stuff like that. So um, I'm, I think we're doing a pretty good job. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's uh, quite interesting because the stalls next door, we've probably been through a set of about three cars while we've been here. And we've probably still got another 20 minutes to go. But we've probably used double the amount of money because we've had to spend extra on water and things like that. So I guess time spent versus money. We're probably about par with the with the bay next door. It's had three cars go so Rinse the wheels and then we're done with the tokens. Then we can then pull over into the bay there and give the car a dry off. Yeah, and had we bought uh, buckets of water with us rather than having to fill them from the high pressure hose, we would have saved $4 of that total. $2. $2. $2. Yeah, because I just reckon you just get a bucket, gamma seal lid, already mix your soap up and things like that, bring it with you in the back of the car and then you, you're good to go. And that also saves you a little bit of time too.
This is the funniest feeling, actually bringing your own leaf blower <laughs> to a car wash site. Because you can put two bucks in there and you can blow it off on that thing, I think. On this? Oh, uh, maybe. The, nah, I maybe. This is just a vacuum uh, just here, a vacuum. but I think a lot of car washes will have yeah. a drying facility. This, this is a strange, strange thing, eh? Well, there's no way to dry your car here. There's no way, unless you put towels and mop up all the water. So it's a bit of a funny feeling, but um, luckily there's not very many people here. <laughs> So this car's um, not ceramic coated, it's just got a layer of b maker on it, so that's why drying with the leaf blower does look a bit stupid. And um, old mate's giving us a good laugh over there, eh? <laughs> All right, so the car's been dried with the leaf blower, so now we're on to the next step, which is b maker So we bought a bunch of towels with us as well. You've got the, uh, the normal drying aid towel we use and the uh, gauntlet as well. The reason why we've got the gauntlet is because it's cold out, and so trying to dry the roof and stuff, especially on a car that hasn't been coated or anything, is, is actually quite hard. If you were planning on doing this as your process, you'd definitely want to try and come in the middle of the day or something like that where it was a bit warmer because trying to dry a car at night time is definitely not ideal. But I suppose if you are coming during the day, then you've got to be mindful there's going to be a lot of people here. So we're on to the final few panels with our bead maker, and um, I don't know about you, but I think one of the things I found was quite nice here versus the setup that we have at home is actually having the boom pole in the, uh, in the wash bay there. Yeah, it's nice because you you know you can just walk around with the cord. You don't have to worry about it smacking into the side of the car or anything like that. I think if we were here during the middle of the day as well, the fact that we're fully covered in would have been really nice because we are always chasing the sun. So I think you absolutely hit the nail on the head there. If you did have a uh, did have a property um, where you couldn't wash at any particular time of the day that was convenient to you, to be able to come here even in the middle of the night, right, or in the middle of the day when the sun's blaring and still have that cover over there, then that definitely saves you. And then. You're just going to have to, you're going to have to make some compromises, I think. You're not going to be able to do the perfect wash, you're not going to be able to spend the perfect amount of time. You're going to have to be mindful that it could be busy and things like that. We're going to be courteous, right? I think yeah. you've got to make sure that you're not coming at peak time and taking up the bay for an hour. But at the same time, this is definitely a viable option if you're living in those areas that we can't, or had those sort of issues that we explained at the beginning. This is definitely something you can achieve. And yeah, you're going to have to spend a couple of bucks on the, on the vending machine, but I think it's it's definitely a good option for those type yeah, of people. Yeah, but it's set up cost wise, right? So you're not having to buy a pressure washer. I suppose you're not yeah. having to buy a foam cannon. You've got most of the gear with you here. So yep, your your barrier to entry here is a couple of buckets, some soap that you're going to bring yourself, and then whatever you want to do for the drying stage of the vehicle. So you'll want some drying towels, potentially some drying aid, and then if you wanted to really add something on, you could use some wheel tools. However, what do you think about using that brush that we've said is a huge no-no for wheels? As a I think if you had case. like wheels that cost you twenty thousand dollars, probably stay away from it. Yep. But if you had wheels that were curved or slightly chipped or something like that, you could probably get away with it. You probably go, hey, look, I'm not going to buy the wheel tools. My wheels are munted. I'm just going to do the brush, and and it is what it is. Mind you, that brush is quite wide though, so I yes. don't know if you'll get into the spokes and things like that. You'd have to play it by ear, and probably if you're at a different place, they might have different tools available for you. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. And look, one of the most annoying things is that we've got all this gear out here now. So we've got obviously our wet mitt. We've got all our wheel tools there. We've got a couple of wet buckets. The bottle's not so much of an issue. The leaf blower as well, dirty towels. You've just got to manage getting all of this back in the car, knowing that quite a bit of this is going to be wet. So you do need to prepare ahead, have a boot liner in there. The cleanup, look, it's the same as cleaning up at home, but it's just the fact that we can't go and let this drip dry outside. We have to put it in the car while it's wet. It's gonna be a bit of a nuisance. So the last tip, I like to put a little bit of um, product on the wheels and just use that as lubrication, basically just to dry them off. And then we'll finish off the tyre by putting on a bit of tyre dressing and then we're good to get it out of here because, man, it is for a reason. So the last step in the process is just to dress the tyres with a bit of tyre dressing. And we are good to go. So there you have it. That is our take of bringing your car to sort of a thing like Wash & World, or this one's particular is called Wash & Shine. Going through a similar process that we typically would at home, but at a facility like this. And you can get the job done pretty good. And um, I've probably enjoyed being here, have you? Yeah, I, I think it's been quite, um, quite fun. Apart from the cold tonight, but we were just having a chat about how fantastic it would be to have the ability to do something like this at home Wash your car any hours outside, and I mean you've got that here, right? Yeah. So a little bit of a drive from home, but you can do it. And for me, it's sort of taken me back a little bit. So I used to come here all the time, and um, especially when I lived in the apartment and um, and worked through not necessarily that process, but a similar process. So for me, it's kind of brought me back to uh, how this kind of all sort of started. And definitely coming here, you get some uh, you get some funny looks, 
that's part of it but you also get to watch everybody zoom out of here because the key is when you've finished cleaning your car well there's a gas station there so when you finish filling it filling your car with gas it's a just pull out of here and just give it the beans eh? burn out just oh not burn, burn out, out but just floor <laughs> it you know and just be like mr cool guy so um we won't be doing one of those because you know there's no one here to watch us but um thoroughly enjoyed being here and um the problem with washing at night time now is that now we've got to drive to the other side of town and now we're going to get bugs on the front of the vehicle but that that that's what it is tonight was just all about showing you what it's like to come here and and, and show you that this is a feasible option for people that are in this type of situation so that's it from Omni Garage. If you want to go back and watch what our normal wash process looks like at home, go back and watch a wash and talk and things like that because we've got our process there. And um, if you're interested in following along with Omni Garage, then subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when new videos are being released. And um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content.